Okay, welcome back to the last of the assumption testing videos for a multiple regression analysis. So in the last two videos, we had our raw items, reverse scored them, summed them and averaged them to get our final scores, which are the, the max sum, Machiavellian for sum total of the, the scale, and then some dimensions of personality. We, then we looked at the assumptions of a linear relationship between the IVs and the DVs or the outcomes and the predictors, outcome and the predictors, and we also looked at the issue of multicollinearity. This video goes over the last two assumptions that I'm going to be um, going over, and that is the assumption that the res residuals have an approximately normal relationship and then the assumption of homoscedasticity. Okay, to start off with the assumption of the normality of the residuals, a lot of people think that the assumption of normality refers to the raw distribution and needs to represent some type of bulk curve. That's wrong. What it really means is that the residuals of the regression model follow a normal distribution. Okay, why do we care about this? So if there is normality of residuals, the assumption implies that the model captures the main pattern and sources of variation in the data, and that the errors are random and independent of each other, i.e. the model captures the main source of variance. It's not whether the distribution is kind of skewed or ketotic and so on. Really. It's all about the normality of the residuals. And I'm, so you might be wondering, okay, well, I'm just going to use a Shapiro walk test and, you know, that'll give me an answer. If it's not significant, then not the assumption is met. Wrong. You see that these tests of, uh, that these tests which test the assumptions or the hypothesis of assumptions also have underlying assumptions, which we often do not test for. So you might have a, you might run a Shapiro walk test that tells you that your data is, um, the normality is, uh, the residuals are normally distributed, but you don't actually have, you haven't tested the assumptions for that Shapiro walk test. So it's better to plot it visually, which is the method I'm going to show you. Likewise for the, um, the homoscedistic residuals. Okay, so to do that, we first we want to go to analyze regression and a linear. So we're going to actually essentially run a regression model, but we're not going to interpret the outcomes yet. We're first going to make sure that we have um, all the assumptions have been met. Okay, so point one, let's do it one by one. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is save and I'm going to save the standardized residuals. All right, click continue, click OK, don't look at the output. What I'm going to get is a Z, which means standardized residuals, and it's labeled as one. So this, you don't need the residuals for each independent, um, or each independent variable or predictive variable, depending on the design you're using, but it really, it's the, the overall ability of the model to predict the data and how far away these residuals are from a normal distribution, okay? So we take these residuals, then we go to analyze descriptive statistics and a QQ plot. QQ plot, no, it's not crying. It is literally a, um, an X and a Y axis with a line going straight up diagonally and that line we testing for represents a normal distribution. Then we're gonna plot the residuals against that normal distribution right only with the standardized residuals and click OK so we can see that most of the data here essentially follows the straight line which means that the assumption of the normality of the residuals is essentially being confirmed right so there are perhaps some one or two outliers but they are there's nothing too extreme you also get this detrended qq plot but really that's nothing too much to worry about you can also see that this one does have some outliers it's probably that same point so just delete this one keep this one and then we can kind of see here that the 
So this black line represents a normal distribution and the residuals largely follow that normal distribution. So we can confirm on visual inspection, plotting the residuals on a normal QQ plot, that the assumption of normality of the residuals has not been violated within this data frame or data set. Okay. So that is testing of the normality of the residuals done. If, however, you find some type of outcome where perhaps the the dots are kind of go in this wavy pattern like this, as my mouse is going, then you need to do some there's some options. One is you can transform the outcome variable. So either you know a log transformation or a qubit transformation depending on what's necessary two you can remove these possible outliers and see how it influences the model remember multiple regression is sensitive to outliers extreme outliers these don't seem too extreme or you can transform the outcome into a binary variable. So for instance, in my data set, my outcome variable is max sum, which is um, a measure of the level of Machiavellianism and participants. Essentially, what they say is, uh, what, what the scale says, is that anybody over 80 is a high Mac, so someone with a high level of Machiavellianism, and anybody below 80 is a low Mac, so a low level of Machiavellianism. So while it's, it's always desirable to keep your scale or continuous data, sometimes the only solution is to um, categorize it, or in this case, binarize it. So then in that case, I'll make everybody who has a score under 80, zero, and a score over 81, then run a logistic regression, and hopefully that would solve that assumption or solve that problem rather. Okay, so the next step, so we, as, we have our assumption of normality. So if you were to kind of include this in a, uh, a report, my suggestion would be to include this plot in an appendix and then refer to it in the results section before you run your multiple regression analysis. For instance, look at, look at appendix A figure four and um, based on inspection upon this this QQ plot of normalized or standardized residuals, we can visually confirm that the assumption of normality of the residuals has been met. Okay. Okay, so the next one is homoscedicity. Homoscedicity is uh, not only difficult to say, but probably the most unintuitive one to explain. So homoscedicity, homoscedasticity refers to a property of a statistical model where the variance of the residuals, so we're back with the residuals, are constant across different levels of the predictor. So we know what residuals are, so they are error that the model does not account for. So in simpler terms, it means that the spread or dispersion of the data is roughly the same throughout the range of the predictors. So because they're standardized, we're gonna get minus three to positive three with a mean of zero. And then we're gonna kind of see how these plot along the, um, the range of the predictive variables. So it's an important assumption because violation of homoscedasticity can lead to biased estimates of the regression coefficient. That means that you might have a higher level, a uh, higher regression coefficient leading to a kind of a false positive significance level and you don't want that so the primary way to test homoscedasticity is to create a scatter plot of the residuals against the predicted values so if the spread of the residuals appears to be relatively constant as the predicted values increase on the axes then homoscedasticity is likely present if the spread widens or narrows systematically it suggests heteroscedasticity and that is the that's the violation of the assumption okay so let's go about doing that so we go to regression linear so we've been here before you can do this all at once when you know how to do it but i think it's better to do it one by one when you're kind of explaining the different steps so we can include all of our variables here go to plots so now we want to go for the the z predictor on the x-axis and we want our z residuals on the y-axis yeah because the predictor is always on the x-axis the residuals of the predictor on the x 
and our y and our z residuals on the y axis right so the z residuals are the outcome essentially then we go okay and we simply click okay again so before we get to it i want to show you an example of what a homoscedistic residual plot looks like and a heteroscedistic plot looks like here we go so you can see a homoscedistic residuals so you can see so this is the the absolute value of the residuals which is on our y-axis so um y residuals and this is the predictor right so you can see that there's pretty much an even spread across the absolute value of the residuals as the predictor kind of goes along there's no real pattern so that means that there's no level in the predictor which causes a dispersion of error or residuals as opposed to the top graph which is a heteroscedistic outcome you can see they, they sort of cluster along on the the lower side here the absolute residuals and then as the predictor increases the dispersion increases as well so it kind of makes like a, a funnel shape so that is a heteroscedistic result and if you have such a result you have violated all your data violates the assumption of homoscedasticity so once again if you have a a heteroscedistic result you can try to kind of transform your dependent variable your y so your your y um variable such as using the square root log and um, alternative transformations and then rerun it again and to see if that kind of resolves this issue okay so let's have a look at our actual outcomes right so i would say so there seems to be a little bit of dispersion up top here but really it's not that much it seems to be a pretty un unpatterned pattern of data right there's no real funnel shape perhaps there are a couple outliers as we've been looking through throughout the data which you know they might warrant being removed if they were any more extreme but in this case i would say that this is a pretty good example of a homoscedistic uh, residual or uh, residuals displaying homoscedasticity homoscedasticity okay so again if you want to interpret this throw this figure in an appendix you know you, you might want to edit it a little bit because it's, it's a bit ugly so you double click on the graph edit it and so on give it a label refer to it in the results section saying figure x um looking at the the to so the standardized outcome on the y-axis and the standardized predictor on the x-axis we can see that there's no real kind of um no evidence of heteroscedasticity in the data of the residuals okay so that is all of the assumptions tested so at this point you'd be able to kind of reliably go and interpret your regression model and that is for the next video all right